conjuring, or magic as it's known in the vernacular. The very words elicit exciting images of interesting people performing wonders. Card magic, in particular, was known by Hofzinser as the poetry of conjuring. If that is indeed true, then Guy Hollingworth is the poet laureate of all card conjuring. He is certainly without equal, and he has now shared everything with us. Join me as we spend a few minutes exploring the exquisite work of one of card magic's greatest masters. And within the pages of this book, you can find all of his secrets. We explore them together. Some beautiful and exquisite sleight of hand with pasteboards. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Erudite Magic. If you love all things magic book related, you've essentially reached heaven on YouTube. My name is Jeff Kowalk, and I am your host here on Erudite Magic. I want to thank you for watching, subscribing, liking, sharing, and otherwise engaging with this channel. It means a lot that we can talk about magic books together. Today's episode should be interesting because I believe I have a somewhat controversial opinion on this book. For the regulars on the channel, you're probably wondering, Jeff, why are you so dressed up? I feel the answer is obvious when you know the subject of today's review. Today we'll be discussing Guy Hollingworth's Drawing Room Deceptions, or The Etiquette of Deception. For some, Guy Hollingworth needs no introduction, but for those of you who do need a proper introduction, allow me to do so. Guy is a British barrister, or what we would consider to be an attorney. Guy is a close-up performer, or is he? He performs exquisite sleight of hand for drawing rooms or what we would consider parlor-sized audiences. I have had the distinct pleasure of seeing Mr. Hollingworth perform at Magi Fest, and he was everything he was billed to be. He is a self-described pedantic sort of person, which I would say might describe yours truly as well. And for those reasons and more, the word of the day is pedantic. So this book, I think, became a sensation when I was younger. I always looked up to it, thought of it highly, and finally acquired it a few years ago. Guy is the type of performer who transforms close-up magic into a parlor setting. He discusses early on in the book how one might go about doing this. For example, by a change of hand position and card position up in front of the chest. Guy has put into writing what I have long considered to be an important aspect of magic work. That is the concept and consideration of your workspace. Gary Ouellette and other writers have touched on this subject for years about presenting your magic in a workspace. For me, your workspace is anything chest height to your face. That's where people want to focus their attention. Or if you're a table performer, having a close-up pad that sets that stage for where people should focus their attention. Your workspace will vary based on your performance conditions, but Guy Hollingworth has found a way to transform card tricks, which are typically looking straight down, into a parlor presentation by bringing them up for audiences to see at a chest height. So what kind of a book is this? I consider it a technical one, a challenging one, and certainly a custom one. What do I mean by this? Early in the book, Guy Hollingworth tells you he prefers a well-tailored routine almost as much as he likes a well-tailored suit. And this is where my opinion of the book diverges from what I assume a great many others think about the book. If you're British, formal, speak perfect King's or Queen's English, you're comfortable in black tie and tails, and you're willing to put in the work required to do exquisite, intricate sleight of hand, then this could be a book for you. I'll tell you that it's not typically my style, but that's okay, don't be dissuaded from looking at this book. 
Let's discuss some of its merits. But first, some of the physical specifications of the book. The book is over 300 pages long, so it is quite a thick book. It was put out by Mike Caveney and MC Magic Words, which I think explains the beautiful presentation of the gold foil on it and the gorgeous spacing, the over 150 hand-drawn illustrations by Guy himself. I'm extremely impressed with the quality of everything about the book. I'll warn you that it is slightly difficult to read in the sense that one, it's British, two, it's formal, and three, it does present some intricate sleight of hand. I don't think it's outside the abilities of the diligent student, but I certainly think you're going to have to put more work into this than your typical book of card tricks. And by the way, it is all cards. As one would expect, I feel that most of these routines are extremely beautiful takes on classic effects. You have card effects in here ranging from cannibal cards, homing cards, various versions of triumph, gambling demonstrations, one of the most famous torn and restored cards of all time, the Reformation, oil and water, card at a number, and of course, waving the aces, which is guys, workspace height take on twisting the aces, that classic by Di Vernon. I will point out that the spacing surrounding the text is quite generous and leaves plenty of space if you're the type of person who likes to write in your books. I'm not, so I considered how this space could have been used, although altogether I think that the size is an extremely pleasant one. So who would this appeal to? As previously mentioned, if you're a parlor or drawing room style performer and you like beautiful, intricate sleight of hand card tricks, this could be the ticket for you. Although also, as previously mentioned, I believe that everything in this is very much tailored to Guy Hollingworth. I believe that many of these routines would feel completely out of place for the standard performer that I've seen. I think one should have a certain amount of charisma, poise, and sophistication to be able to pull off some of the miracles that Guy is sharing here in this book. So where does that leave the average Joe like you and me? Certainly, I think it gives one something to which they could aspire. Not everything in the book is extremely difficult, but I will say that the overall difficulty level of the book is above average. If you're into things like the diagonal palm shift or other technical aspects of card magic, this is something I think you'll love. It was fun to read in a weird sort of way. What do I mean when I say a weird sort of way? The language is very heady and has some wry British humor in it. I found myself smiling on occasion, although more often than not, I was impressed with the way in which the book was written. It oozes sophistication and style, something that makes you yearn to do better magic. You will see how Guy works in interesting plot points to make even a standard card trick seem way more interesting than just, look, the card rises to the top again. And while I think that one could pull off some of the more sophisticated storylines, I think that like so many things, they would go much better with a proper British accent. As already alluded to, throughout you'll find some terrific insights into how to make your magic better and some of Guy's thinking about what constitutes great magic. I found myself nodding in agreement as I was reading through his section on the dealer room and why he's never been one to like to go there to look for that one great miracle that will make you a great performer. Instead, he seems to focus on developing his own material, which is essentially what you're getting in this book, is his own material. Somehow I feel he's managed to pull off the perfect magic trick. That is, he's published so many things that he actually does with a generous spirit, hoping that you will learn to perform them. And yet, when I read this, I have a hard time envisioning myself being able to pull off so many of these miracles. While that is true, I did find myself inspired by Guy Hollingworth's dedication to something. He's a part-time professional. We've talked about the concept of a part-time professional from Gene Anderson's book, and Guy Hollingworth is the epitome of what a part-time professional looks like. He develops beautiful magic that fits his persona perfectly, and he does it all in his spare time. Most of the items in this book are going to require quite a bit of work, but there are a few items that won't require quite as much work. Chapter five comes specifically to mind, which would allow you with some upfront work and not so much sophisticated sleight of hand work, would allow you to take someone's signed card, place it in a deck, have it shuffled, and then make that card appear in any impossible location that you want. It's a great set of 
tools to get your mind thinking about how you could apply these principles. In the middle of the book, he has an interval where he shares some of his favorite techniques that don't necessarily have a trick in them. Oh, and if you do pick up the book, be sure to read the introduction very carefully because Guy Hollingworth shares with you one of the most accessible tricks in the book right there up front. Most of the items in the book are not going to require any sort of special cards, special decks. Everything is done almost exclusively with regular playing cards. There will be some arts and crafts for those that are dedicated enough to want to do everything in the book but nothing too crazy. There are a few standard items that you'll have laying around that Guy will teach you how to make, whether it's with envelopes, paper clips, or otherwise everyday objects. If you have the discipline and the chops, you're going to be able to do almost everything in the book. When you examine a book like Drawing Room Deceptions, especially in today's market, I think you'll find that it's a complete bargain. I'm holding the ninth edition. However, the very first edition was published in 1999. I believe that if this book were to be published today with the secrets that it contains, you would expect to spend much more than $45. However, let's not quibble over why it's still available at such a great price. I recommend you pick it up while you can still get it at such a great price. This is the type of book that eventually will be out of print. There's no doubt in my mind. So you're going to want to pick it up before it's gone. It's not a book that I return to over and over again, and I think the controversial part of my opinion is that I don't find it to be as wonderful as so many others find it to be. This is my opinion completely. I think it's a beautiful book, and I think it has much to offer to the magic community, but my style is not one of a hardcore sleight of hand card performer. I typically do one card trick in my entire show, and it's not likely to be one of these. However, when I have seen Guy Hollingworth perform, the things that he does with the cards are absolute miracles and they're incredibly beautiful. Some people, when they perform, you can just tell that they've spent and dedicated their entire life to magic. Their technique is flawless and their selection is marvelous. Guy is one of those performers. I certainly believe that reading it can make you a better magician if you open your mind and allow yourself to see some of the beauty and sophistication that Guy has put into his magic. If to this point in your career you've mostly focused on easy to do card tricks, then this will certainly stretch you in ways that you have not yet been stretched. I believe this is the kind of book that will go on your shelf and it will be there when you're ready for it. One should revisit this type of book periodically with a notebook in one hand, a pen in the other, and an open mind to take notes and learn from someone who is a truly delightful master with the pasteboards. I think you'll be inspired even if you don't undertake anything that he wrote in the book. And hopefully it will cause all of us to aspire to a greater level of professionalism in our own magic work. Of course, if you have questions about anything or if you have a different opinion on what you think about this book, I would love to hear from you. Please drop a comment down below or I'm going to start a thread over on my Facebook Instagram, and of course, the YouTube Magic Community page so that you can sound off about what you think about Guy Hollingworth's Drawing Room Deceptions. Until next time, my erudite friends, God save the queen and keep reading.